Hey, this is Miko, and today I got the first chance to drive the new 7 Series plug-in hybrid. This is a 2017 740E High Performance X Drive. Really long name, but basically, it's the there's only one body version for the 7 Series. It's the long wheelbase and electric the hybrid plug-in hybrid comes only as all-wheel drive which is kind of nice less options to choose and it's nice to have that option and um, we're just we're ready in the car we're ready driving and drive for a few blocks and we're just getting on the highway the main question is is this car gonna work is this car enough because this is the same powertrain that they use for the 3 series plug-in hybrid but on the other hand they use it for the x5 so i, I was guessing they will be okay and uh, we were playing a little bit, trying to figure out how everything works. And displays are different, it's a little bit not as, in, not as intuitive as others, but that's probably how all these cars are gonna, be look, are gonna look in the future. So as all uh, plug-in hybrids, it has the E-Drive uh, button that'll go, this one has four different settings. So right now we're in, um, I believe it's automatic E-Drive. So automatic E-Drive, the car decides by itself, uh, whether it's going to be an electric or, or gas mode. This display is pretty nice. It shows you where it's going to be charging, so the engine will go off when you slow down or brake, and instead of taking the energy, energy it will charge the battery back. It has a separate dedicated display for the battery right here. Right now it's showing me I have two miles to go on electric. So we're going to play with that, see how it's going to change. Other modes, if I hit the button, now it's in max e drive max e drive you can be in electric mode up to 75 miles an hour so now i have this other display here that shows me that you know whether it's okay whether i'm not driving too fast basically the speedometer goes up to 80 and i think 75 is the actual max we're uh, up to which you can be in electric mode this display right now is limited to 40 whatever that is and i think it just Okay, and just told me our range is 50 miles an hour. I mean, uh, range is 50 miles, uh, both gas and electric. So this side shows me how fast I can go, how much I can push the accelerator before the gas kicks in. The third mode is battery control, and I can set the target value. So in this mode, I can set it so the engine works, and it will be working as long as the battery is charging or charged up to 80%. After that, um, it will go electric or gas. Um, last mode is automatic, and automatic is just, hold on, do we get through all four? So maxi drive, battery control, auto e drive, okay, I'm sorry, maxi drive, yeah, and um, one, two, auto e drive, yeah, I'm sorry, three modes, not four modes. Um, all right, also, again, it's a plug-in hybrid, which means that you can plug it in, level to charger, will charge it in about four hours, and you'll get about, uh, I believe, 15, 17 miles to go on electric only. Again, your speed will be limited, but for city driving, it will be just plenty. Um, I'm gonna take a different route today. We're not gonna go to the Twister Road. We'll just go on the 280 highway, go up the hill, and uh, just see what this car, how it feels. Um, so right now, again, this is max e-drive mode. We can use the same cruise control as uh, this is adaptive cruise control, so I'm going to play with that. And we have the lane, uh, I mean the steering assistant, uh, lane assistant, which helps me hold, uh, hold the line. I don't have to push the steering wheel, so this guy just cut me off. So I had to touch the brake. I would not, I don't want to test the accident prevention. Do this again, set the cruise control, accelerate to 75, and that's basically what it's doing. So right now, I think it's still holding electric. I don't think the engine is working, but the mileage is showing I have one mile range, so it's not gonna last long. Um, as far as we know, they, these batteries always gonna hold about 10% reserve for acceleration, for e-boost, electric boost. So if you need to accelerate, um, since this is a small engine, this is the four-cylinder turbo, sometimes you might need more power to move a big car, and people expect these luxury cars to do, you know, to drive, uh, to be able to accelerate smoothly and efficiently and fast. So there's always a little bit of range left. 
So let's try different things. We'll go to automatic e drive, see what that's going to do. And right now, when cruise control set at 75, and we're just following that car in front of us, close the distance. There we go. And um, another thing we're going to try, I always want to try it with these cars, it still has the other controls that uh, um, driving dynamic controls. So the economy mode, the comfort mode, and the sport mode. As new cars, they also have adaptive. So we will try the sport. I just want to get out of the traffic and go somewhere actually um, take advantage of that. Um, all right, so beyond that, this is the um, same powertrain. And we expect the new 5 Series is going to come out soon, the plug-in hybrid. It should be pretty much a twin of this car, except that it's going to be a little bit smaller but all the technology displays, the driving feel should carry over. Uh, so that's another thing that I'm even personally interested in seeing how it's gonna feel. And um, so far it feels fine. It's not too fast, but on the other hand, I'm not trying to accelerate too fast, uh, too fast either. We're going 75 miles an hour and it feels totally fine. As you can see, it's quiet, it's smooth. It's help, helping me hold the lane. That's about it for now. Uh, what else we're gonna try? So let's try economy, see what that does. So did not change much, display changed. Uh, the options to change uh, to the individual, but that we'll have to go through settings to get there. Another thing, let's see, back to comfort, display changed again. Adaptive, nothing changes. The one thing that's challenging me is I can't really tell if the engine is running or not. I'm trying to figure out by the display. I'm guessing it's running right now because there's no um, battery left. But I can't tell for sure because the display is a little bit confusing. Like this display, it's not a Tacoma. In regular cars like the X5 and the 3 Series or, or older hybrids, when the engine is not running, the RPMs will be at zero. It'll say ready. This car. Now it's a charge, so I'm guessing it's not running, but when it goes over zero, I just can't tell if it's running or not. So that's the only thing that's uh, kind of weird. I think the way it's designed is that you, you don't really have to think about it being a hybrid. You just drive it, and if you want to plug it, then you plug it, and then you just don't worry about it. I think that's how it's set up. All right, so let's start this, try the sport mode, and uh, so now display has changed and you have the, again it shows, so different display shows you like a circle for charge and circle for boost. So if I take the, let me turn off the cruise control. So right now I'm coasting and right away the boost circle lights up. Okay, I can tell right now the engine is running, but right now I have the RPMs. So in sport mode you do get that, you really do get that feel and it's totally fine. Take a foot of accelerator, it shows that it's charging. So that's fine, that feels really good. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but you can hear this nice throaty, throaty sound of the engine. Even though it's a four-cylinder engine, like if, if I didn't know, I didn't, didn't tell someone, I probably can, can fool someone that, that it's something else. And now I'm gonna try to go to Highway 1. Go around some cars. That's the boost. So right now there's really, I can feel the boost. It's going up the hill really nicely. It's still very smooth. So I really like that feel. The comfort, the speed, that's exactly what you would expect. It's just flawless. And um, again, I'm, I'm driving this car for the first time. And um, I'm, I'm actually thinking to myself, like if this is the car I would drive, and I totally, I, I, I don't see the reason, any reason why you would go with 740i over this car. It's, it gives you plenty of power, there's enough power. If this is not enough, then 740 might not be enough either. And then you just want to go with a, uh, with a 750i, because that's really is a beast. But um, this is just fine. It feels great. We're still going up the hill. Uh, I want to get to some turns and make sure, like, get a feel for the handling of the car. 
it shifts nicely. Let's try the sport shifting so I can see which gear I'm in. So this is six gear. So far in handling, I have plenty of reserve. Like people, I just cannot even go. People, other cars don't let me go as fast as I would want to go just to test it. So there's definitely plenty of power and plenty of handling on this car. Um, overall, I'm kind of impressed. All right, so we burned through a lot of gas. I guess based on my driving, it tells me I have 30 miles left. Just a few minutes ago, it told me I had 50. Uh, but again, this is just anticipation because I'm in sport mode. I'm not sure when I go into economy, if that's going to change. Uh, but again, to back to what I was saying, I think it's a really good option, um, especially if you want to lease because these cars are known to get lease credits. And lease credit makes bigger difference than difference in the price of the car. So let's say you get a car that's 3000 more expensive, but you get 3000 lease credit, which is a rebate. That's twice as much on your payment as $3,000 difference in, 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 uh, in the price of the car because price of the car is residualized the rebate is just like cash out of pocket so that's it thanks for watching check this car out thank you